Welcome to Defense Upcast, your daily deep dive into the defense strategy and geopolitics shaping tomorrow's world. Imagine a fighter jet that can fire American missiles, British bombs, Japanese weapons, and work with any drone partner it encounters in battle. Sounds like science fiction? Well, the UK, Japan, and Italy are making it a reality with their sixth generation GSAP fighter. And the reason why they're doing this reveals something crucial about the future of air warfare that nobody's talking about. Today, we're breaking down exclusive revelations from the International Fighter Conference in Rome, where GCAP officials just dropped some major details about how this next-gen fighter will change the game. And trust me, the implications go way beyond just carrying more weapons. First, let's get everyone up to speed. GSAP, that's Global Combat Air Program, is a sixth-generation fighter jet being developed jointly by the United Kingdom, Japan, and Italy. This isn't just another fighter jet. This is the successor to platforms like the Typhoon and F-35, designed for the combat environments of the 2030s and beyond. Now, at the International Fighter Conference in Rome, Group Captain Bill Sanders from the UK's Future Combat Air System team revealed something fascinating about GCAP's design philosophy. And it all comes down to two words, maximum flexibility. Sanders announced that GSAP is being designed with a weapons bay that can accept any armament used by the three partner nations, by NATO and by the United States. We're talking British Storm Shadows, American Jade Dams, Japanese ASM-3 missiles, you name it. GSAP can carry it, but it doesn't stop there. The fighter is also being designed to work with any collaborative combat aircraft. That's military speak for loyal wingman drones. Whether it's a British drone, a Japanese drone, or an Italian drone, GCAP needs to be able to command them all seamlessly. Now you might be thinking, okay, that sounds cool, but why does this matter? Well, that's where things get really interesting. Sanders pointed to one critical lesson. Ukraine. Here's what he said, and I'm paraphrasing. In modern conflicts, you burn through your weapon stocks incredibly fast. When that happens, you need the ability to tap into other nations' stockpiles and supply chains immediately. Think about what's happening right now in Ukraine. Western nations are scrambling to keep ammunition flowing. Some weapon systems are running dry. The ability to cross-load munitions between platforms becomes absolutely critical when your primary stocks are exhausted. But there's another dimension Sanders revealed that's equally important. Cost management during prolonged conflicts. At the start of a war, you need expensive, high-end weapons to break through sophisticated enemy air defenses. We're talking advanced cruise missiles, precision-guided munitions, the expensive stuff. But here's the reality check. You can't sustain that throughout an entire conflict. Once you've degraded enemy defenses, continuing to use million-dollar missiles becomes economically unsustainable. Sanders specifically mentioned the need to drop down the cost point and transition to cheaper, even dumb, unguided bombs as the defensive threat diminishes. With a flexible weapons bay, commanders can optimize their cost-per-kill ratio throughout different phases of a conflict. That's not just smart engineering. That's strategic thinking about how wars actually unfold. Now, the drone integration aspect is equally revolutionary. Douglas Barry from the IISS think tank pointed out something crucial. Each GCAP partner nation is developing their own sovereign drone capabilities. The UK has its programs. Japan has its programs. Italy has its programs. GCAP needs to work with all of them. This creates an incredible tactical advantage. Your drone wingman gets shot down? No problem. Link up with another nation's CCA and keep fighting. It's interoperability on steroids. But, and this is important, this flexibility comes with challenges. Jorge Tamarit Degenhardt, the CEO of Eurofighter, raised concerns about the costs of adapting fighters to work with multiple different CCA configurations. His exact words, we cannot do everything at the same time. We don't have infinite resources. This is the classic tension in defense procurement maximum flexibility versus development costs 
and complexity. So here's the bottom line. GSAP is being designed as the most flexible, adaptable fighter platform ever conceived. It reflects hard lessons from Ukraine about supply chain resilience and cost management in prolonged conflicts. But it also reflects the growing complexity of sixth-generation warfare, where manned fighters will operate as quarterback nodes commanding drone swarms. The question is, can the UK, Japan, and Italy actually deliver on this ambitious vision? And at what cost? What do you think? Is this level of flexibility worth the development complexity? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this valuable, smash that subscribe button. We're tracking GCAP and every other next-gen fighter program as they develop.